Hello, this is Taylor. So with the turn of every year, many of us make resolutions, 38% of us to be exact, to work out more, read more, go to bed earlier, and maybe the particularly strong individuals with robust mental fortitude actually succeed in implementing these goals. But for most of us, they're forgotten after just a couple weeks as we revert to our devious status quo. In fact, only 9% of adults actually follow through with their New Year's resolutions all year long. Pretty pathetic odds if you ask me. So why even make resolutions if the odds are stacked that high against us, you might ask? Well, I can think of a couple reasons. For starters, I like to think, perhaps naively, that I could actually be part of that 9% if I just try. So there's that. Two, there are steps that we can take to increase our odds of being in that 9%. And three, I figure that 9% is better than no percent. And if we don't set goals for ourselves, then we're just kind of wandering around aimlessly and not really growing, which is even more pathetic. So here are my resolutions for the year and my step-by-step -step plan on how to actually achieve them instead of just listing them out. Yes, these are my personal goals, but I'm fairly certain that at least one of these will resonate with you. So keep on watching and you might just find this helpful. Before I tell you my first one, can we make a deal? If you've ever enjoyed one of my videos or you're watching this right now and not absolutely despising it yet, if you'd kindly hit the subscribe button, I in return will make bigger and better videos for you this year. And that is a promise I am happy to keep. Thank you very much. Now let's dive into it. So the management consultant in me will always categorize shit to make it easier to process. And this first category of resolutions, well, we're going in deep, y'all. These are my higher up fruits, the opposite of low hanging fruits, the macro goals that I have for myself that will take a bit more time to achieve. My first resolution, ironically, is to move in silence. Move in silence sounds so cringe to me, like someone saying big ting's coming and nothing ever comes, or it's like a mixtape. Alas, it is something that I plan on taking seriously. Now let me explain, and I'm sure that many of you guys can relate to this. I think that I ask for too many people's input. I've learned about myself that I find comfort in having my actions validated by someone else that I care about. At the core of it, it's because I often get excited about something going on in my life and my natural instinct is to then share it with someone and get their take on it. Even things as small as FaceTiming my mom while trying on a pair of jeans to ask if she also likes them. Now, I've reflected a lot on whether or not this is actually a bad thing. And during this reflection, I found that a key detail is that I still will make the ultimate decision myself. If I like the jeans, I will buy them no matter what. I just enjoy talking it out and having a second opinion that ideally validates my own opinion. So I came to the conclusion that for small things like that jeans example, there's really nothing wrong with this as long as I can still make my own independent decision and not have to rely on someone else giving me the green light. However, things get a bit trickier when we're dealing with medium and big decisions. I'm talking things like career, life, and relationship decisions. So using YouTube as my example, this might be something like what kind of videos should I be making or what are some of my overarching content strategies? When it comes to things like that, I have found that at the end of the day, my intuition usually knows best. As cocky as that might sound, our intuition has shown to be quite reliable. In fact, a Stanford study that tested this found that intuition led to the best choice 68% of the time, compared to a 26% success rate for more head-focused strategies. So once I realized that my intuition rarely leads me astray, I formed this move in silence resolution, which is for these more important decisions in life, the medium and big things, I want to narrow down how many people's opinions I ask and what I ask their opinions about. There have been too many times where my judgment or momentum on something was clouded because I asked someone else for their input when deep down I knew what I needed to do. So two ways that I plan to challenge this natural instinct that I have. The first one is to take a pause before sharing something important with someone. Evaluate whether it will actually serve me in some way to have that conversation. And second goes hand in hand, but spend more time independently reflecting. I already journal a ton, so I want to use this as a tool to get my own thoughts out on paper before seeking someone else's. So final thoughts on this resolution. This is a key nuance that I of course have to mention, and it's that there are just so many times where there is still going to be a time and place to brainstorm with others. I mean, even yesterday, a content creator friend of mine came over to my apartment and just a short conversation with him really opened my eyes up to a new content strategy that I'll very likely pursue this year. So there are undoubtedly so many people in my life with fantastic ideas, ton of creativity, and just experiences that would really benefit me to learn from. But when it comes to my specific personal and career goals, my plan is to hold those cards much closer to the chest so I can move for the most part, according to my my own volition in silence. My next macro goal is to remember my why. I read this quote recently that says, the stronger the why, 
the easier the how becomes. And that seriously stuck with me because the number one thing that got me out of any creative ruts I had last year was refocusing on my why. That is a much easier thing to grab onto to motivate yourself than to just say, come on, get motivated. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so what even is your why? It's the fundamental purpose behind your actions. Why do you do what you do if you had to explain it? Something that's been so helpful for me is clearly defining my why, writing it down and revisiting it every single day. Seriously, every single day. I want to know my why to its core and live it every day. For the bold and the brave folks out there, let me know your why in the comments down below. I would be absolutely delighted to hear. Quick reminder to uh, thumbs up and subscribe if you're not hating this. God, do it for that army crawl, if nothing else. <laughs> so my last macro goal is kind of related to remembering my why, but it's even deeper. And it's to align myself and my decisions to my values. Sure, I have goals. This video is literally about my goals. I think that they're important to have to use as a guide, but the best over overarching question that I think we can ask ourselves to determine if we're becoming the kind of person that we want to be is, am I living my values? If you align your behavior to your values and create outlets in your life that support these values, I pretty firmly believe that that is the best way that you can be on a good path to leading a fulfilling life. So what are my values and my plan to live by them? I listed out my top five and then kind of brainstormed some actions that I can take to align myself to them. So at this point, I go over five of my values that I would see disproportionately stick out to me and some actions I can take to align myself to them. They're a little personal. It goes on for a little too long. So I'm just gonna tell you the five and then we can move on. Positivity, growth, connection between like me and other people, gratitude and reliability. Can maybe discuss in a separate video, but for now, let's move on, shall we? And even thinking through these and writing them down was a super helpful exercise for me. So would encourage you to do the same, see what your top five values are and how you can live those on a day to day. I do have one more macro goal for myself, but in the spirit of moving in silence, I'm gonna keep that one private. And now let's move on to the lower hanging concrete fruits. These are the more black and white tasks. Not to say that they're all easy to achieve, but they are things that I am very confident I can achieve if I actually try. So here's the trying. So my first concrete goal is to develop better sleeping habits via a clearly defined wind down schedule. Now stay with me because I know this is a basic goal, but it's an important one and I'm gonna make it substantive. So I am the first person to say, of course I'm the first person to say this, but chronotype is real. So your chronotype is your body's natural inclination to fall asleep at a certain time. And yes, chronotypes are accepted by the scientific community. I first learned about chronotypes when I read a research-based book about sleep. Yeah, that book. So take my word for it, or Matthew Walker's word for it. Now, if you know me in my personal life, odds are you have, at some point or other, roasted me for my sleep schedule, especially while I was in college. I have been hard pressed to come by someone who is more of a night owl than I am, besides maybe my brother and my parents. Yeah, it's genetic. Anyway, knowing good and well that I am night owly as fuck, and that a lot of my good ideas do come at nighttime, I for sure give myself some grace on falling asleep a bit later than most people that I know. That being said, my late sleep time often gets very out of hand and for no good reason. Okay, Taylor, so back to the resolution here to develop better sleeping habits. I'm actually super excited to get into this routine because I know it will improve my life. And here is my exact plan to do it. Please forgive how oddly specific it is, but I think the structure will be good for me. Around 11 to 11.15 p.m., finish phone and laptop activity. Send final texts, respond to final comments on my videos, say goodnights to the roommates if applicable, but Lord knows they're usually in bed by 10. Make a chamomile or rooibos tea if it's winter, as per usual, and bring up a full glass or bottle of water to put on my nightstand. Step two go upstairs. Don't trip on the stairs. Don't forget to turn off the damn hallway light. Around 11.15 p.m., put that phone on do not disturb and throw it on the charger 30 minutes to one hour before I would like to be asleep. Step four, shit, shower, and shave. Just kidding. Unless. Shower, brush teeth, and skincare. Around 11.30 p.m., get my squeaky clean butt in bed. Have my book waiting for me on my nightstand. No, on my pillow better. Start reading. Around 12 to 12.15 a.m. Lights out and asleep with very little room for exceptions on weekdays. Rinse and repeat. Now, I know that even this schedule is on the later side of things for most people, and that's okay. This is a realistic one that I think will work for me. So think through a step-by-step -step wind down routine that you think might work for you if you share this goal of mine. It's actually kind of fun and exciting to write. Like, I'm excited to do it tonight. So anyway, I thought this exercise was helpful. And as always, I feel the need to say I will for sure allow room for flexibility with this one, especially on weekends when this routine gets passionately thrown out the window with all of my strength. And that's okay. Truly anything to build positive relationships as 
discuss. And if that means that I'm staying out a bit later on weekends or even some weeknights, so be it. So if I'm doing this 80% of the time, or I guess five divided by seven days a week, 71% of the time, that's a success in my book. But as I said, I'm actually excited to do this routine. I feel like excitement is kind of key with things like this. And yeah, to read more books instead of like dicking around on Instagram at night, <laughs> which reminds me, maybe I should actually finish that research-based book about sleep. My next concrete resolution actually starts with a resounding pat on my own back for the exercise routine that I successfully implemented in the last eight months. I feel like I've complained for years since college that I lost touch with Athlete Taylor, who was an immense part of my identity for most of my life. Yet it wasn't until last year, the last eight months really, that I actually did something about it and maintained a routine. And oh boy, did I. Some goals, most even, require some easing into, I feel like, especially exercise. But for whatever reason, I went full throttle on this one and never looked back, taking Barry's boot camp by storm. This is not sponsored whatsoever, but for my workout classes, I use ClassPass, which ends up making them like 40% off. I have a referral link in the description. We both get free credits. Check it out if you also want to do workout classes. Anyway, enough patting my own back, but I do want to acknowledge my small and big wins and having a strong exercise routine last year was definitely one of them. So with that strong routine, I want to start phasing in supplementary exercises during my in-between workout classes days. I have found that the number one key to actually sticking with an exercise routine is to find something that you genuinely enjoy doing. It seems obvious, but the amount of people I know who are like, yeah, I'm going to start going on runs because, you know, so many of their friends do it, but they actually just don't enjoy running. You're just not going to stick with that routine. So try something else. Some potential options that I think I would enjoy kind of including in my current routine are the following in case this serves as any inspiration to you. Number one is high intensity interval training circuits with my dumbbells in my bedroom or on my terrace if weather permits, which it is not right now. Only need 30 minutes for this. Potential option number two is to find a partner or multiple partners with whom to do a weekly zone two run. Zone two is a low to moderate level of cardiovascular exertion. So think sort of a jog slash light running pace where you can pretty easily maintain a comfortable conversation with someone else next to you. Potential option number four, one I'm super excited about, is to seek out more opportunities to play sports, especially in the spring and summer and fall. Volleyball specifically, I would love. And this kind of returns to my point earlier on embracing playfulness and returning to my childhood roots because there is nothing more fun than playing sports on a summer Sunday in the sun and being exhausted at the end of the day. Final option, this is kind of something I just want to do regardless, but just stretching more, maybe learning how to do a couple more yoga moves in my bedroom, that's better than nothing. So this is a resolution that I plan to ease into starting with just one day a week. And if you guys would like a video on my fitness journey and how I actually stuck to a routine last year, let me know in the comments. I've been toying with this idea for a while. Next concrete resolution, this is a short one. It is to cook more and keep my eating to an eight hour window. Pretty self-explanatory, but here's the plan to do it. For cooking, purchase an air fryer because that shit can cook just about anything with minimal effort. I've seen it with me own eyes. And then my plan for the eight hour eating window is really just to stop snacking at night. So I already intermittent fast on most days, not on purpose, it just kind of happens naturally. I don't really have an appetite until around noon and then I crave dinner around 7 p.m. or so. But all of the benefits that come with intermittent fasting, like improved metabolic health, cellular repair, enhanced hormone regulation, brain and heart health, the list goes on. All of that gets thrown out the window when I break the fast by so much as putting honey in my nighttime tea. So no more snacking for me after dinner. And as for all of these concrete goals, I am happy to allow for some flexibility on this one, because as I said, for the most part, I optimize for good relationships. And if that means that I'm eating out with a friend instead of cooking or having some late Friday night drinks outside of the eight hour eating window, so be it. But on the average weekday, when I don't have other plans, I would love to cook because it has happened too many times Times now where I have to respond to someone. Eh, not really. I just Uber Eats. It's getting embarrassing. My final concrete goal is a little embarrassing and kind of childish, but it is to keep my room clean. <laughs> I've been letting Jordan Peterson down for years. I can be a messy little lady. Not dirty, but a little messy. So I clean my room spotless every time that we host a party. And then for about two weeks, it kind of remains that way. It's awesome. And then eventually it reverts back to shambles. Admittedly, I have too much stuff and no excess of space. I mean, this is a New York City apartment we're talking about. 
but that's a separate issue that you know I'll tackle another time. So this is my plan for my clean space, clear mind goal. Number one is the broken window theory. It always starts with throwing some clothes on the couch. Make a point to not do this as often as possible because the higher the pile gets, the more daunting. Seriously though, just dedicate one to two minutes during that wind down nighttime routine to put away the clothes that I wore that day or to file away any shirt or pants that made it on the couch during that weekend. That is seriously all it takes. Step number two, on Sunday nights, take an extra dedicated five minutes to clean my space. Whatever that entails, whether it's really just the clothes on the couch or some dust on my windowsills or lint around my sink, because I love starting the week off right. And I'm pretty confident that these five minutes can be an enjoyable ritual for me as I present the dainty little gift of tidiness to my future Monday morning self. And the third plan, this feels so childish because you guys probably all do this. Put away my clean clothes as soon as I take them out of the dryer. Failing to do this starts the vicious cycle of my clean clothes occupying my hamper and my dirty clothes finding their cozy little place on the couch. If I had a nickel for every time I plucked my clean green t-shirt out of the hamper, you can do it, Taylor. Grow up. Make Jordan Peterson proud. On that note of making Jordan Peterson proud, thumbs up and subscribe if you made it this far. And I have a huge life update video coming pretty soon that you might want to catch, I don't know. <laughs> and until next time, turtle out. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. But I think it's funny. God, I am not 26 years old.